Today we're going to introduce to you and show you how to install Minn Kota's Altera. So in the owner's manual on page six, you'll see the tools and required resources to perform this job. You'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver, a number three Phillips screwdriver, a drill, a 932nd drill bit, and a person to help you with the installation. In this particular installation, we're gonna use a quick release bracket. The quick release bracket I like to use with all Alteras is the MKA32. Again, it's a two-part plate system, and uh, you mount one onto the bow of the boat, you mount the other one to the bottom of the trolling motor, it drops in place, there's a lever that activates a cam, and it locks it in place very solidly. So I really am a fan of this MKA32, and that's the one we're gonna use for this trolling motor. So in the hardware pack that came with the trolling motor, you're gonna find a number of different fasteners here and some rubber bumpers. These are spacers, and uh, I'm not quite sure if we're gonna use them or not, and I won't know until we set this motor up on the bow, but you're gonna find some longer hex head bolts, some fender washers, again, all stainless steel, some nylocks, and some shorter hex head bolts, and those are the ones we're gonna to use to mount the base of this trolling motor onto the top plate of this quick release bracket. You'll also notice some clipped washers. We'll also show you how we're gonna use those on the installation. In the box that contained the quick release bracket, we got a number of different parts. We got, this would be our top plate or the part that goes on the trolling motor. We've got a plastic cover and we also have the base plate which gets mounted to the boat. So the plastic cover, what's nice about this is let's say this particular boat um, is gonna go out on the weekend and they're not gonna go fishing, but they're gonna go uh, just boating and doing some water sports. You can take the trolling motor off the front of the boat, put the plastic cover over the base plate, lock it in place, and now you're covering up all the sharp edges of that base plate with the plastic cover. It's also good if you have a boat cover that will not fit over your trolling motor. You can simply pop the trolling motor off, put the plastic cover on, and cover your boat, and away you go. There's an additional hardware pack that came with the quick release bracket. We're gonna use some of the fasteners in this as well. So right now we're just gonna set that aside and we're gonna tear into this trolling motor and start taking the side plates out. So with the side plates off, we're ready to start putting this trolling motor onto the base plate of this quick release bracket. But before we do that, there's a damper shock here that we need to remove, and that's held on with two little E-clips. And I'm just gonna take a little flat blade screwdriver and pop those off. Okay, we'll set those aside. We need those for later. And then we're gonna just pull this dampening spring off. Now you'll notice the orientation on it. And there's an arrow there. Okay, that arrow is gonna be pointed to the lower unit. So, always if you're removing something, just remember how you take it off so you put it on the same way. So, we'll set this aside. So, here's our two plates for the quick release bracket. So, and they'll fit on the motor either way. You can do it 180, but there's only one right way to do it. So, to clear anything up, what I do is I'll just set the top plate into the bottom plate. And you can simply set the entire assembly up on the front of the boat. Okay, the lever on the base plate is gonna go in towards the boat, okay? And then you can take the top plate off knowing this is gonna face the lower unit of the trolling motor, okay? So we'll bring that back to the motor. One thing I like to do, just a little tech tip, is take a little Loctite and put a little bit in each one of these bolt holes. Here's where a short mounting bolts and our clipped washers come into play. So if you look on the base plate of this trolling motor, you'll see just a regular hole, three of them on this side. If you look at the other side, you'll see there aren't holes, there's slots. So what we need to do is get our clipped washers started in the quick release bracket and the clipped portion of the washer faces the inside of the trolling motor. So I have a little trick to do that. These rubber bumpers that we pulled out of the hardware pack of the trolling motor, I have a couple extra ones that I just clipped a notch out of. So what I do, start it on the bolt, 
and just kind of snug it down on top of there. And what these clipped spacers do is they keep the washer up on top of the mounting base plate of the trolling motor. The other trick I have is I keep the point of the hex head facing in, and that'll give me enough space to slide it in, yet have enough room on this side to completely tighten these hex head nuts. So now I'm just gonna double check and make sure our clipped part of our washer is facing in, which it looks like they all are. Now I'm gonna push the motor tight to the points on those fasteners. Now that side's done, I'm gonna come back to this side. I'm gonna put our clipped washers in and then start our bolts. I'll go ahead and finger tight them all and then grab a 7 16 box wrench and tighten them up. So now that we have the fasteners on this side secure, we're gonna go ahead and put our dampening spring back on. Slide that back into place. And then those two little E-clips we removed earlier, we're just gonna snap those back on. Sometimes you need a flat blade screwdriver to help it a little bit. Okay, that's done. We can go ahead and put our side plate back on now also. One thing to be very aware of is you have a couple wires here, and those are running to, to sensors that are located in different parts of the trolling motor. So now if this wire for some reason happened to get moved up over that hole, we're gonna damage it putting our side plate on. So something to be very aware of when you're putting your side plate back on, just make sure your wires are not in the way of these, uh, of your screw holes. Okay, with that done, we'll put the side plate on. So now that we got the top plate of the quick release bracket securely fastened to the bottom of the trolling motor, we'll take the boat end of it, or the bottom plate of the quick release bracket, set that on the bench, and then I'll just put the trolling motor on there and lock it into place. Okay. The two plates are securely fastened. Now I'm gonna pick the trolling motor up and I'm gonna go set it on the bow of the boat. As far as placement on the front of a boat, there's a number of things to take into consideration. Number one is where the bow roller is. If you're on a steeper landing or the boat gets backed in too far into the water, that bow roller is gonna ride up and come just like this. So if the motor happened to be mounted like this, and the conditions were right and the boat rolled off of the trailer, you're gonna have some issues with that bow roller slamming into the bottom of the trolling motor, either breaking some plastic or bending something. So that's one thing you wanna avoid when mounting it. The other thing is you'll wanna see there's a notch in the bottom aluminum extrusion of this trolling motor. The back side or the inside of that notch has to be in line with the edge of the gunnel. And the reason for that is, you'll see on the bottom of this drive housing, you have a big knob here. When the motor is down, it fits in this notched area right here. And if you mount it with the back of this notch to the outside of the boat, you'll have enough clearance when the motor's deployed. Another thing to keep in mind is a bow light. Here we have a bow light right here. Now, if we put that motor too far over to the left, Okay, we're gonna have trouble getting that bow light in when we need it. So we gotta push it over this way a little bit so we got clearance for that bow light. Okay, and then last but not least, you don't want the head of the trolling motor outside of the gunnel. If it does hang over, you could run into instances where you're docking and you have a dock post that could hit it and damage the front. So we're gonna push that in a little bit past the gunnel, so we're inside of the boat. 
We're going to make sure we're clear with our bow eye. We're going to make sure we're clear of our bow roller. And we're going to make sure the trolling motor is sticking out far enough where the back side or inside of this notch is even or slightly out from the edge of the gun. So what's the next step? Right now we have to fasten the bottom plate of the quick release bracket to the boat. So the way I mark it is I'll take a piece of tape, masking tape, and I'll just tape it to the boat right alongside that quick release bracket. Okay, so I know the tape is gonna represent the edge of the quick release bracket. Then I'll just take a marker and just put a tick mark right there at the front of the quick release bracket. So when I separate the two plates, I can take the bottom plate, set it up to my tape, mark my holes, and go ahead and drill them. So we're gonna break the two plates apart simply by flipping the locking lever. Removing the motor, we'll set it back on the bench for now. So we have the base plate removed from the motor. We're gonna line it up to our tape, and now we're gonna mark our holes. If you read your owner's manual, they ask for a minimum of four fasteners. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get four in here. And while I'm marking, I'm gonna put my hand underneath it and feel for any obstructions, wires, um, uh, whatever's down there. You just wanna make sure you got a free area where you're gonna be drilling a hole. So I know that one's free. We're gonna use that one. I got a big aluminum support underneath this third one in. So I'm gonna use the fourth one. We're gonna mark that. And then we're gonna mirror it on the other side. And then that back corner, and we're all free and clear underneath it. Another thing we wanna point out is, we talked about the carpet and the different elevations on this boat. You'll notice that when this is tight, it's bumping in to the top of the gunnel. Okay, that's not good. So what we're gonna do is those rubber bumpers that came in the hardware pack, we're gonna put those, once our holes are drilled, we're gonna put those in between the carpet and the bottom of the base plate, and that'll make for a nice smooth transition when we're going from carpet to aluminum. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up the hardware pack that came with the quick release bracket. So in that, you're gonna find some oval head machine screws. And we're gonna be using four of the longer ones, along with four fender washers, and we're gonna use four of these nylocks. The rest of it, we won't be using, so you can discard that. Put our rubber spacers right over the holes, okay? And now we're gonna take our base plate and put it over there. Sometimes those rubber bumpers move a little bit, so I'll just take a small screwdriver and just kind of line everything up. I'll get one hole and bumper lined up. Start my fastener, get the other one. There, our fasteners are in place. We're long enough, we're hanging out of the bottom good. Um, we got our washers and our night locks ready to go. The other thing I like to do, and um, it isn't mentioned in the owner's manual, but you got stainless nuts on the stainless bolts. And if you use a power impact or a power driver, or you hand tighten them too fast, you're gonna get what's called gulling. Well, actually the nuts and the bolts are gonna seize and you can't get them off unless you break them. So a simple rem remedy is just to take some little bit of anti-seize and either put it on the bottom of the bolt before you push them in or just fill the nylock with some anti-seize. Okay, so with that, what I like to do next is I take my washer and my nylock and I start each one. And I tighten them to the point where the nylon engages the threads or when you can't hold on to it anymore. Okay, now we'll finish tightening them. Okay, we'll drop that into the base plate. We'll lock our lever. And now that trolling motor, as you can see, is securely fastened to the front of this boat. We can go ahead and put, put our prop on. So in the box, the armature arm or the prop shaft, whatever you will, um, has a little plastic device on it with a nut, a red washer, and a stainless washer. So we're going to go ahead and back that off, back that nylock off, and remove all this stuff. Okay. 
The red washer we're not using, it's just a spacer for shipping purposes. So you'll see the, the shaft and the drive pin. That drive pin will engage the slot in the back of this prop. We'll slide that on and line up the groove in the back of the prop with the drive pin. Okay. We'll slide our washer on. The other thing I like to do, again, back to our anti-seize, is you got stainless on stainless. We're just hand tightening this, but it's never a bad idea to just put a, a little anti-seize on the threads of that armature. We'll hand tighten the nylock we took off earlier. And then go ahead and finish it with a 9 16th ratchet. And you'll feel it bottom out. Okay, snug it up. You don't want to put too much torque on it. Okay. Our prop is on, we're ready to go. One of the final steps of the installation is to figure out what all these cords are for. So we already did the power cord, that's complete. So there's another shorter pigtail hanging off of this, just a four prong plug. That's the foot pedal plug. So that'll simply push into place and then tighten it up with the threaded cap. That's your foot pedal and that has an 18 foot cord on it. So you can move that around the boat however you want. You got heel down and toe down for left and right steering. You got left and right steering here also, and you got momentary prop. Now there's a mode to this, and we call it Altera mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the motor on. And you'll notice when I press the mode button on here, we get an amber light on. When the amber light is on, the functionality for the stone deploy and the trim is on the bottom of the foot pedal. So with the two click press of the center button, you get the motor to deploy. Now when it's in the upright position, with the amber light on, you can trim it down or trim it up. To stow the motor, simply press the center button once. One thing we should make note of too is when the motor is deployed, If we want the prop to work, we have to hit the mode button once, amber light goes off, now we have the prop functionality, momentary, momentary, we have a constant button here, we have an autopilot button here, we have left and right with heel down, toe down, and left and right on the bottom of the foot pedal. Now you'll notice when I hit the momentary button, the prop doesn't spin, and there's a reason for that. It's a safety feature, number one, the motor is not trimmed down past that sweet spot. It's about 12 inches down. Just to keep that prop from spinning when it's out of the water, maybe hitting the boat or the trailer or whatever it is. So to get that prop to spin, you have to lower it first by putting it back in Altera mode with the amber light on, trim the motor down, and then you can hit the mode button again and you'll be able to use the prop and the steering functionality. We're not gonna do that here because we have a trailer in the way. So we can't show you that right now. That's something you'll have to do when you're on the water. There's two cords coming down from the coil cord. And they have two very different ends. The bigger one is actually a sonar extension cord coming from the MDI transducer in the lower unit. Okay? Because we don't have a sonar mounted on the front of that boat, that cord will not be used. The only way to use that cord is to get a compatible Hummingbird fish finder mounted on the boat, and with an adapter cable, you'll be able to utilize that transducer in the lower unit. The smaller diameter cord is for the iPilot link functionality. Okay, earlier, you'll remember when we were unpacking this trolling motor, it came with a 30-foot extension. There's a male and a female end on this cord. Because we don't have a sonar up on the front of this boat, we have to extend this iPilot link cord to the hummingbird that's mounted on the dash of this boat. So with this extension cord, we would simply put it, attach it to the trolling motor, and then string this extension cord through the boat, and with an adapter cable, it'll hook up to the helix that's on this dash, and that'll give the user full functionality of the iPilot link features of this motor. So the last step of the installation process is to mount the heading sensor that we've talked about a couple times already. So in this particular boat, we found the front of the dash here, a suitable location for the heading sensor. 
we, we kind of ran around the boat looking for magnetic interference and this was a good location for it. So we're gonna go ahead and mount it here. I know that the distance between the heading sensor and the trolling motor in this particular boat is close enough where we won't have any issues with the two pairing with one another. If you have a longer boat, um, 20, 25 plus, and the heading sensor is gonna be toward the rear of the boat, a good thing to try, a good tip would be go ahead and hook a temporary power supply to your heading sensor. So if this is at the back of the boat, throw a temporary power on it, go through your pairing procedure, and if the two do indeed pair at that long distance, you know that the distance is close enough where they will communicate with one another. So to go ahead and pair the two units, you're gonna press and hold, you're gonna press this pair button, it's gonna blink fast, then you're gonna go to the pair button at the head of the trolling motor and you're gonna press and hold that and you'll get a tone change when the two pair. Now your heading sensor is paired and we know the distance is close enough where we're gonna get good communication between the heading sensor and the Altera. All right, so when mounting the heading sensor, I like to put a little tick mark underneath where our wire is gonna go through. So I need to go ahead and drill a hole in the dash here. With our hole drilled, we need to fish our power wire for the heading sensor down underneath the dash to grab some power. But I, I don't need nearly as much cord here, so I'm just gonna cut it shorter just to make it a little bit easier to work with. I've already looked underneath the dash as far as obstructions and stuff, and I know we're clear there. So I'll just fish this wire down through the hole. And you'll notice on this heading sensor, there's an arrow on it. That arrow you want parallel with the keel of the boat. The heading sensor does include two fasteners in here, so we're gonna go ahead and drill a hole out for that. And what I like to do is I get one started And then once I have one started, I'll just step back and make sure that uh, that arrow is indeed in line with the keel, which looks good there. Then I'll go ahead and drill my other hole. Okay, our next step is to go underneath this dash, grab the two wires we fished through, strip back some insulation and hook it to 12 volt positive. Good idea to put a fuse holder in there, it just calls for a one amp fuse, uh, so we'll grab that, we'll connect it up. So what we did is we dropped our power wire from the heading sensor down behind the dash here and grabbed the wire, and then there's a 12 volt receptacle that has switched power through the master switch on the dash. So we piggyback the power supply to that with our one amp fuse to power up our heading sensor. So now when the user turns his master power switch on, the light comes on on the heading sensor, and uh, we know the two are paired, so we're ready to go. There's always little tricks and, and tips that you kind of learn after doing so many of them over the years. But if there's any question, always refer to your owner's manual when you're doing the installation yourself.